everyone and welcome to another Garden City Arts online program. Today we are painting Go Paint the Stars um, and in a painting inspired by Vincent van Gogh and you'll see that picture up in the top corner of your screen. And if you purchase an art kit from Garden City Arts then you are in luck because all of your colors are pre-mixed for you and ready to go. You might not think it by looking at it, but there are a lot of colors, a lot of different variations of hues in this painting. So if you have a painting kit, go ahead and lay them out in the order that you see on my palette and make sure you grab your paint water, have your chalk handy and go ahead and grab your own paint brushes. Remember they're not included in the kit. And I would highly recommend having um, a large wash brush, having some kind of a size of shader brush. You're gonna be using the shader brush a lot. I personally use the angle brush instead of the shader brush, but this is a more common brush. So this is just fine if that's what you have. And a round brush. So those are the brushes that you'll need. And remember that the great thing about these programs is that you can kind of go at your own pace. So pause the video when you need to, fast forward when I'm boring you, and enjoy. So let's go ahead and get started. Very first thing, I'm gonna set my paint off to the side and I'm going to use my chalk to draw a horizon line. If you want to imagine this, that's absolutely fine. You don't have to draw it, but I like to have a good uh, reference point. And remember this horizon line doesn't need to be straight. In um, Vincent van Gogh's original one, he had some mountains on in the upper right hand corner of his painting. So once you have the ground where you want it we are going to take our biggest brush whatever you have and we're going to prime it so dip it in paint water and pat it dry and we're going to use this very first color this cerulean blue is what we are starting with and we're ending with the green for the cypress tree so i'm going to grab some paint my paint is a bit dry so i'm going to have to mix some water into it and i'm going to start right at the horizon line and go back and forth and apply a nice application of paint. We're going to distinguish the sky from the ground by going back and forth in the sky and doing curved lines on the ground. So make sure you are watching how you are painting this. That is important. So I'm going to go right along my horizon line and just get that in. My paint needs to be brightest along my horizon line it needs to be thickest and by having thick paint it's going to be brighter paint by mixing water into paint you're making it more transparent so when you paint it on black it'll make it a little bit more dull um, not as bright so that's the trick that we're going to do we're going to do really heavy paint right at the horizon line and then as we move up we're going to put some water into our paint what will happen is it'll look like the horizon line's a little bit brighter than the top of our painting where the night sky is. Now try to do as big of brush strokes as you possibly can. Um, if you don't, you will have a whole bunch of little lines kind of popping up. That's where your brush stroke ended. That's just fine because remember, this is the first layer of our painting and we have quite a few layers to go. So if you end up having a whole bunch of brush strokes, that's okay. Don't grab the wrong color blue though, like I just did, that's not okay. <laughs> I mean, it is okay, it is what it is and paint covers paint. However, try not to do what I just did. And go ahead and get that horizon line nice and bright. And then as you move up, that's where you're really starting to add more water to your paint. So don't worry if you don't have very much paint left, that's okay. Add more water to your paint. It extends the amount of paint you have. And it also makes it a little bit um, more transparent so that it will appear darker as you go up, which is the goal. Okay, once you have your sky semi done and I apologize if it's uh, difficult to see with the reflection I'll just show you by tilting the cam uh, canvas and hopefully that will help you 
Remember, first layer, it does not have to look amazing yet because we're gonna do a whole bunch of layers. Van Gogh is into lines and dotting on paint, so we're gonna have some fun. So next step, we're gonna worry about the ground and we're going to use this darker blue. It's ultramarine blue with a little bit of cerulean mixed in. So we're gonna use this blue for the ground. When I apply paint, I'm no longer doing it back and forth. I wanna distinguish the ground from the sky, not only in color, but also in the brush strokes that we're using. So I start right at the sky and I bring it down and curve it. Now, you can definitely leave some dark canvas popping through right at the horizon line. You don't have to be thick with your paint there. And as this paint dries, it's gonna dry a lot darker. So don't worry, it'll do the job for you. We may have to do two layers on this ground, which is why we're doing it right now. We'll come back to it and do another layer if it dries too dark. So, and remember this is your painting, so you might say, ah, I like the ground the way it is. That's cool, if you don't, well, you'll put a second layer on it. So we have the ground and the sky kind of figured out. Now we're gonna move on to establishing our stars. If you want, you can um, take a moment, take a beverage break and let your canvas dry a little bit and then you can use your chalk to draw on. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna keep going and I'm just gonna paint them on. So again, you can take a beverage break, pause, and then draw on in chalk what we're about to do, or you can just wing it like I'm gonna do. So I'm going to grab my half inch wash brush. So I'm going just a little bit smaller, and I'm gonna start establishing the stars. And I'm gonna do that in this light blue paint. Now, you might notice that we have a lot of it. That's because we're gonna use it for two different things. This is the first time we're using it for basically kind of outlining where our stars are gonna go. Now, the most, um, the biggest focal point in this painting is by far Van Gogh's moon. So I'm gonna just make a nice big circle right here. Now I use the top edge of my brush to kind of make some lines coming out and away. We're gonna go over this in some white as well and some yellow. So don't stress too much if it's not exactly how you want it. This is kind of like um, our sloppy copy and it's kind of like our guide. Okay, next I am going to put in my galaxy. That's my other focal point. And the galaxy is kind of cool. It uh, looks kind of like an S with like a, a hook coming into it. So the very first thing I do is I come kind of towards the middle of my canvas. I'm using the top edge of my brush and I'm making a really cool S that has a huge swirl inside of it. And this galaxy could be pretty big. It's another focal point in Van Gogh's original painting. Now, the S is just one component. The next part is a hook and the hook is kind of wavy and it comes and it looks like it's hooking onto the S and it's about to take it off of the painting. So, see how I was using the top edge of the brush to do that? That's a really good technique for Van Gogh's paintings. That's something that you'll probably be doing a lot of. Next, I'm gonna start putting in um, the light that's right along the horizon line. So I'm doing a whole bunch more of this little movement and I'm doing it right along the horizon line. I'm not gonna do it solid. I'm not gonna have a solid band all the way across. I'm gonna have a whole bunch on the right side and then I'm gonna come over and do a little bit 
on the right side. Now my paint is still wet, so I'm getting some really fun um, movements, uh, mixtures I should say, a movement of paint and mixture of paint, which is great. If you don't like that, then you will need to let your paint dry. Okay, but make sure you wash off your brush. Now I'm going to move to a smaller brush, my round brush, and I'm gonna put in some stars. There are definitely a whole bunch of them in Starry Nights, for obvious reasons. And so you can just kind of pick and choose where you put them. You can put as many as you want. Um, just know that I would put kind of the smaller ones up high and then maybe put like one or two big ones right here and then you're done. You can put as many as you want, but I would be careful not to go overboard. There does need to be some black sky still showing. And even though we're taking inspiration from Van Gogh, remember, this is your painting. So, you know, have fun with it. I'm gonna make some more squiggly lines around it that I might not have made in the original because I was being a little bit more true to the original. Okay. Oh, one thing that I am doing that I'm kind of ashamed of myself for doing is that I don't have any stars coming off my canvas, so I'm just gonna put one or two coming off just so that not everything's stuck on the in the middle. Okay, so like I said, look at that. The ground is drying and man, you can barely see any of it. Um, so I'm going to do a second layer before we move on. You can too. In the paint kits, I'm gonna add just a little bit of white so that this shows up a little bit more. So you might not have this problem when you're painting it, like I'm painting it right now. Or I'm sorry, like I'm having right now. If I have to, I can do a third layer. Probably I'm gonna have to. Hopefully you won't have to. Okay, so I have a good start, but now I need to make my stars more like stars. Right now they're too blue to be really like bright stars in our sky. So I'm gonna start introducing white. I'm going to use my half inch brush and I'm gonna use the top edge, but if you're not um, really enjoying that brush, if it's not working for you, or maybe you just don't have that brush, what you can do is use your shader brush. Again, I use an angled brush more than I do a shader brush, but it kind of does the same thing. Um, regardless of what brush you use, you're using the top edge, not really the side. So I'm gonna start putting in, that's the next color on my palette is white, and I'm gonna start putting in some white. So I'm going to make the big, huge moon nice and bright white. If your blue is still drying like mine is, you might not be able to do as much of this step as you want to, that's okay. I'm gonna have to just stop and come back to it later. Instead, I'm gonna come and work on the rest of my stars that don't have quite as much paint and on my galaxy. The little dotting motion, usually even if the paint is wet, you don't have as much trouble with um, blending when you don't want it. Just like down here, it didn't all blend together to make a new blue. I'm gonna switch to my round brush to put 
white in the center of the stars and you'll be able to see more of what I'm talking about. So for the stars, we want a nice white base in the center and then we can do these little white spots kind of coming around. We're not covering up all the light blue. We're more like adding like a little addition to it. Okay, so it's just a little um, partner to make it look a little bit nicer. Okay, I'm going to have to let my blues dry just a little bit before I start adding a lot of yellow. So I'm going to take a break. If you need to take a beverage break, go for it. And then I'm going to come back and just add a little bit more white wherever I had trouble. So for instance, if you're like me and you're having trouble right here, let it dry, add another layer of white, and then we are going to start introducing the yellow. And that really starts to bring um, it together. After we have the yellow, then we'll move on to some of the other cool parts of the sky. So you all have earned a beverage break. Go ahead and take one and we'll resume in just one moment. Okay, so some of my paint is a little bit drier. So now I can go back in and as I was talking about before, I can put another layer of white on and really brighten that up. Okay, if there's anywhere else that you see on your canvas that you need to put some white, you can go ahead and do that. And then we'll move on. Remember that this painting isn't exactly like, oh, we're all done with the white. We're done. <laughs> we can move on. No, it's more like, okay, I'm going to put some blue on. Ooh, now I think some more white would look really nice. So don't feel like you can't go back and forth and add more or maybe cover something up okay so next step we are done with our white we're going to move on to our yellow and we have two different shades of yellow we have a light yellow and a quinacridone just regular old yellow the light yellow is going to be thrown in to start off with as kind of like the the build to this darker yellow so I'm going to switch to my angled brush and I'm going to start doing some more intentional little dots. So what I mean by that, instead of having these big ones, I'm going to have little tiny ones that are maybe a little bit squatter, a little bit thicker, and I'm going to think a little bit more about where to put them. I'm also going to bring my yellow out into the black, into the darker night sky. And then I'm going to start putting some yellow into my stars. I can put little tiny dots around my yellow. So the whole um, idea behind a lot of Van Gogh's paintings was to have a light source and then to show the light source coming out and kind of filtering um, or vanishing, diminishing into um, the 
overall environment or the darker night sky. And that's kind of what we're trying to do with this application. So it's brightest in the center and then as it comes out, it dissolves. The lines kind of space out and it goes into the night sky. Now, if you're not liking the brush strokes, like the really thin ones, and want like chunkier ones, like in the original, use the round brush. That's what I'm gonna do really fast to show you the difference. Um, so I have a much more round brush stroke. So it's thicker, it's heavier. And if that's more of what you want, it is going to take up space and move you through this painting a lot faster. Um, it's gonna look a little bit um, more whimsical and a less um, stylistic like the uh, brush strokes I was showing you. It just depends on what you like. And remember, if your paint's getting a little dry on you, then go ahead and just dip your paint uh, brush in paint water and mix a little bit of water into your paint. That'll make it a little bit more fluid. It'll be, make it a little bit easier to use. And I'm just gonna put a little bit more detail. And the whole idea is to get kind of like a, a yellow circle and then we'll put a dark yellow on top for the moon. Okay, so once you are happy with your stars and also don't forget about this little light area down here. There's a little bit of yellow in here. There's also a little bit of white that I forgot to put in. So, you know, like I was saying before, don't, feel free to uh, go back a step, grab a different color. Okay, next I am going to start filling in the in-between. No, I'm not. I forgot something. I forgot the dark yellow. So next I'm going to introduce the dark yellow and I'm going to create a nice little moon, a crescent moon. So to do that, I start by doing the outside of my crescent, just kind of basically making like the letter C that kind of looks like it's tilted. And then I come back in and put another letter C inside. And you fill it in with your dark, well, it's not dark, but darker yellow, the cadmium yellow. And that really does distinguish the difference between that ball of light and your crescent moon. Now, I wouldn't use a whole bunch more of this. I would just use a little bit maybe to dot in some of the stars, but really it's mainly for that crescent sun. Okay, so now I'm gonna do what I was just about to show you. And that is, I'm going to fill in all of this empty space. Now, if you like it the way it is, you could leave it. That's fine. I'm not going to. I'm gonna take it a step further. I'm gonna show you how to use a little bit of this and a little bit of this to kind of fill in the space, the area in between, and make it feel a little bit more connected so that it's not um, empty space star, empty space star, but it's more like the light moving through the sky. So I'm gonna take some of my light blue and I might even take just a big old glob and take a little bit of cerulean blue and mix up some different colors. 
So feel free to do this too. In order to really get a nice painting, you might have to mix a few different colors on your palette, a few different versions of blue to really get like in between colors because I don't want a super bright blue, but I also don't want a dark blue like that I, we started off with. So I'm making an in-between color. And I'm gonna just throw in some little dots. And these little dots, they cannot just be straight lines. They have to go around and in between. They have to curve around, start going around the circle, and then flatten back out and then curve again as it goes around the moon. So think about creating movement by putting a whole bunch of different brush strokes, following different forms. Now, as I get to the top, that's where I might just use straight cerulean or even the ultramarine blue because I want it to be pretty dark up here. I don't want to have a lot of brightness. That's gonna take away from the brightness down here. So, as you move up, think dark. As you move down towards the horizon line, think bright. And just go ahead and put a whole bunch of little dots in. It doesn't take a whole bunch of time If you go fast, just don't overthink it. You gotta do a bunch of this, just dot, 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 dot. When you're happy with your sky, we can move on. If you feel like there's something still missing, you can come to this green color. If you look closely at Vincent Van Gogh's original, he has a lot of green in the sky that I might not normally put in. Um, green is generally not a color you see in the sky, but um, it does look really nice and it does make a little bit of sense considering his light source. So, I take this kind of greenish color. If you want to, you can mix it on your palette. And I put just a little bit of this green around some of my stars, and especially down low here, where it's kind of close to the horizon line. And this just adds another layer of interest to your sky because there's just another layer of color. It's not just all blues. It's kind of blues, greens, and yellows. And so once you are happy, you can move on. Maybe you've already moved on. Who knows? Remember, you can touch that fast forward button. So if you are bored and want to move on, you can. Um, if you are still painting, just keep dabbing and dotting. Okay, 
when you are ready, I know I keep saying that, but when you are ready, we're gonna move on. So, one thing you wanna do before we move too far on, you wanna check your ground. Is your ground how you, how you want it? Or is it not bright enough? If it's not bright enough, you might add a second layer of color, or third, it's my third, and brighten it up just a little bit. I'm introducing a little bit of cerulean blue. It's gonna help. But remember, you are doing curvy lines. Okay, so once you're done with that and your canvas is dry, we're gonna put in the very last focal point. So when you look at Van Gogh's Starry Nights, one of the biggest things you notice is the cypress tree coming up and kind of off the canvas and going all the way to the top. We're gonna to put that in. To put that in, we're gonna put a layer of black paint first, and then we use this green to kind of accent and give it a little bit more dimension. So, like I said, you have to make sure that your canvas is nice and dry, or you're gonna to have to freehand it. If you want to, you can draw with chalk. Again, canvas is gonna be have to, is gonna to have to be nice and dry. Um, if you're like me and your canvas is not dry, then you can freehand it by grabbing your round brush and your black paint, and we're going to draw in our cypress tree. So the cypress tree starts pretty wide at the base and pretty heavy and then it comes up to these little points. And one point goes almost all the way to the top. And then the other points kind of stay down low. Now, I should have talked more about this at the beginning, but you don't have to do a cypress tree. If you Google Starry Nights by Van Gogh and like pop culture, for instance, you will see probably all of your favorite shows um, up, make an appearance in a Starry Night painting. So somebody has made some fan art, um, maybe someone who loves the show, same show you love and, uh, <laughs> and Van Gogh and has just combined the two. So definitely um, look that up. You don't have to do a cypress tree. You could do something else kind of fun. You could put um, the TARDIS flying away, Harry Potter, what have you. I'm just gonna keep it simple and do the cypress tree. So once you have your cypress tree nice and solid and black, it all has to be painted in black. And you know what? I've been thinking I would probably have switched brushes. That cypress tree is pretty big. You might want to use a bigger brush. It'll make your life a little bit easier. So once I have it in nice and solid, I am going to use my brush and I don't even have to really clean it off. I'm just gonna grab some of that green and I'm gonna start putting in some detail. If you need to, you can always wash out your brush if the green isn't as bright as you want, but really it needs to be pretty dark because this is a nice paint, night painting. Now I'm going to add just a little bit of detail and I'm kind of following the curves and I'm doing that little line work that we did so much in the night sky. just about finished. Remember, if you need to, you can always take some black and put some black back into it if you got carried away with the green like I just did. And when you're ready, swirl, tap, and dry your brush and pat yourself on the back. This isn't exactly an easy painting, but you guys got through it, and I bet it looks fabulous. Um, I hope you enjoyed, and remember, take your time. You can always add something else in. 
I would love to see your creative interpretations of this painting. If you decide to put your favorite pop culture um, item in, make sure you tag Garden City Arts on Facebook. And I hope you have a good rest of your evening. See you all later. Thank you for watching this online program. Please help Garden City Arts thank these generous sponsors.